Hello Pre-Calc Honor students. Here we are with permutations with repetition and circular permutations. Let's start off by studying our two closest neighbors, Canada and Mexico. First start with Mexico. In how many ways can you rearrange the letters in Mexico? Well, there's seven distinct letters, so that's just seven factorial. Seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Or um, I'm sorry, there's only six letters in Mexico. Oh dear. Okay, six letters in Mexico, so that's six factorial. Six times five times four times three times two times one, or 720. And you could have also used your calculator. Now, in how many ways can you rearrange the letters in the word Canada? The big difference is now we have repeating A's here. And if it was just uh, one, two, three, four, five, six distinct letters, then we'd have the same answer again of six factorial, which would lead to 720 possibilities. But let's actually label these A1, A2, and A3. And you can see that in all these 720 possibilities, it's going to treat this as a different permutation from this, A3DA2, and a different permutation from this, A2NA3DA1, or CA2NA1DA3. Or C A three D A two N A two D A one or C A three N A one D N two. So basically there are six possibilities in here. Six rearrangements of A one, A two, and A three. So we have to divide those out because now these are considered different. So this is basically just one of the permutations we're looking for. So we're going to take 6 factorial and divide it by 3 factorial, which is all the ways we could rearrange the A1, A2, A3. So 6 factorial over 6 is 5 factorial, which ends up going down to 120. So we only have 120 distinct permutations of Canada. So the number of permutations of things not all different. Here's the formula. Let S be a set of n elements of k different types, and let n1 equal the number of elements of type 1, n2 equal the number of elements of type 2, etc., until you get to n sub k equals the number of elements of type k. Then the number of distinguishable permutations of n elements is, you basically have to divide out the repeats. So you have to take n1 factorial, n2 factorial, n3 factorial, times, 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 all the way up to n sub k factorial. And amazingly, this always works out to still be a whole number, not a fraction. Now, you don't really have to bother the one, the, with the ones and so forth, but that's just how the formula is set up. So when we look at this state here, how many permutations are of this state? Do you recognize the state? That's right. It's Massachusetts. M-A-S-S-A. -S -S Massachusetts. There's the spelling. And so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 letters. So it's 13 factorial. That's if all the letters were different. We would divide by 1 factorial, 1 factorial, 1 factorial. And if we go through the list, we have 1M. A's, we have 1, 2 A's. So 2 factorial. S's, 1, 2, 3, 4 S's. So that's 4 factorial. 1 C. 1H, 1U, and 1E. Oh, two T's, two factorial. So essentially we're going to take 13 factorial and divide it by 2 factorial, 4 factorial, 2 factorial. Now when you in your calculator, be careful, 13 factorial divided by a common mistake for students is to go like this. Do you see the problem with that? 
You've got to put parentheses around your denominator multiplications or it's not going to work. And you should end up with this 68,864,800. Uh, 68,864,800. Now, example two. The grid shown below represents the streets of a city. A person at point X is going to walk to point Y by always traveling south or east. Let's get a little grid up here. This is north, east, south, west. So, for instance, they might go a couple blocks this way, and then decide to go down, and then over, and then maybe down twice, and then over, and then down, and then over. That would be east, east, south, east, east, south, south, east, south, east. Now, another person might say, oh, no, I'm going to go a different way. I'm going to go south once, and over, down, and over, down, and over down and then realize, oh, now i got to go straight east. So they went south, east, south, east, south, oopsie, south, east, south, east, south, east, south, and then east, east, east. Okay, both trips take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten blocks. Either way you go, look at it. You're either going to have to go four south and six east, or six east and then four south. That's another possible possibilities. But notice how we've got four souths interspersed in here and in both of them, and six easts. So in terms of coming up with a solution now, method one is use permutations with repetition. That is, you've got this one route, East, east, south, east, east, south, south, east, south, east. And think of it just like the Massachusetts problem, where we have 10 factorial, and we're going to divide out the repeating elements. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 e's, so we divide by 6 factorial, and 1, 2, 3, 4 s's, 4 factorial, which a basically is equivalent to 10 c4, which also equals 10 c6. So you can do that on your calculator or go through this as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, and the 6 on down cancels with this, and then 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we get 10 times 3 times 7, or 210. Now another way to think about this method 2 is basically to realize that you're going to have to go east 6 times and south 4 times. So in all your 10 blocks you have to do, you could number the blocks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and decide you have to pick which one of those trips of your journey, which of which four of those has to be self. So you can change this into a per combination problem by saying pick four of your ten blocks walked to be self. And when you do that, it will force the other six to be east. You could also view this as, so 10 choose 4, which would be the same thing as picking <clears throat> six of your blocks to go east. And again, you get 210. <coughs> so when we do combinations, it's an interesting way to see that it could also be viewed as a permutation with repeated elements where you have exactly two kinds of elements, two types of elements. Here's circular permutations. Attila, Napoleon, Victoria, and Genghis want to sit down at a table to play Risk. In Risk, who plays after who can be very important, but not so important who is closer to the door. So that is, when they sit down at a circular table, their main concern is who's going before them, who's going after them. If I were to rotate all these individuals like this, it's really the same game, isn't it? In terms of who's going before who. Now they're still going to roll to see who starts and so forth, and that's another story. But in terms of sitting at the table, this is what's important to them, the relative positioning around a circle, which makes it different than the linear ones we've been doing before. And in circular permutations, so basically, then, you can think of having one person be the start, like Genghis here, and you can think of Genghis as being fixed and then as we go clockwise around, how many choices do you have here 
for this next position? Well, three. It could be Attila or Napoleon or Victoria. And then you only have two choices. And then this choice is forced then because there's only one spot left. So essentially we get three factorial or just six ways to arrange these four people around the table. So in circular permutations, uh, if you have n objects, it's going to be n minus 1 factorial. Now, I want to conclude with, uh, there are many ways to view some of these problems, and there's equivalent approaches. For instance, three friends enter an empty theater, and they want to see how many ways they can sit down in the front row, and there's ten empty seats there. So they could sit here, friend A, friend B over here, and friend C way over here. Okay? Now, there are four ways to approach this problem. We're going to have a lot more than four arrangements. In the first, we could pick three seats, like which three seats are they going to sit in, so that's 10C3, and then arrange them within the seats. Well, once you've picked the three seats, you have three friends, so it's three factorial. So that works out to be 10 factorial over 3 factorial, 7 factorial times 3 factorial. The 3 factorials cancel. You get 10 times 9 times 8, or 720. Now, you can also think of this as a permutation of the repeated elements, like you've got your three friends A, B, and C, and seven ghosts. Ooh. And now you can think of a rearrangement of all these souls. So there's ten souls all together, but the ghosts, they don't really count, do they? We can't see them. So you divide out by seven factorial. Those are the repeated elements. And again, you get 720. You can also go back to your multiplication principle. That is, the first friend walks in the theater, and how many choices do they have? They have ten choices of seats. Now that he's used up one, the next friend, she's only got nine choices of seats. And then the third friend, it's only got eight. So ten times nine times eight is 720. And lastly, permutations. The seats can line up beneath the people. And actually, you animate the seats, and they arrange themselves underneath the people's seat. So you've got 10 seats, and you're choosing 3, but you care about the order, so it's 10p3. And that works out to be 720 as well. Okay, a lot of different ways to look at that. Flange out.